Quentin Flowers is honestly one of my favorite college football players of all time, and he may be the best player in South Florida football history. He may not have the record for passing yards in a career, but Quentin Flowers is the all-time leader in touchdowns, rushing yards, and rushing touchdowns in school history, and he rewrote the Bulls record book for three straight years. Despite that, he never got a chance to do anything in the NFL, and it looks like his professional career is over. He did get to spend some time in the NFL and XFL, but nothing really ever actually happened. So my question is, what happened to the best quarterback in South Florida football history? Today we will talk about the three terrible tragedies he had to overcome to beat the football odds against him and become the college football star he became, and why his professional football career has ultimately not worked out for him. But you gotta stay till the end to find out. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new to college football or love stories about football players as I will bring you guys the best stuff on YouTube and you won't want to miss out on it. Be sure to drop a future video suggestion down in the comment section and turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload. Be sure to hit that like button, share this video, comment, and just stay till the end so it'll help the video grow which will make my channel do better and I can make you guys more content. Enough of all that though, let's get started with what happened to Quentin Flowers. Quentin Flowers is one of the most tragic and inspiring stories in college football, and the odds he had overcome to get there were tough and tremendous. The journey of USF's dynamic quarterback from one of the roughest areas of Miami to the center of a remarkable program turnaround in Tampa was not without setbacks. Flowers was listed at 6 foot, 203 pounds, though both those figures might have been a stretch, and many schools never thought he could play quarterback. He was getting recruited by schools such as Alabama, Florida, Kentucky, Mississippi State, and Tennessee, but USF was the only program that guaranteed Flowers would be able to live his dream. But before we talk about why he chose USF, let's revisit his childhood and the tragedies he went through that made Quentin who he was today. We have to go all the way back to an area of Miami called Liberty City, in which he lived in, and it was a very rough and full of violence. Amari Cooper is actually from there, fun fact. Back when he was seven, on a random Sunday, he was on his front porch sitting on his dad's lap watching the dolphin. His dad worked for the city as a garbage collector and gave his son some money to get a snack. But before Quentin could even get to the store, he heard a bang off in the distance. Turns out his father had been struck with a stray bullet and he was dead. After his father's death, Quentin found salvation on the football field. While his mom would stay late working extra hours, Flowers would play with the Optimus Club in the area, the same area that nurtured NFL players such as Devontae Freeman and Duke Johnson. He became super close with his mom, and she is what kept him together. But then, the unthinkable happened. After Quentin's sophomore year of high school, he was told she was battling cancer. After she started treatment, he began to excel in the field. In January of 2012, he was in Orlando for a football tournament when he logged on to Facebook and saw messages saying his mother had died. He rushed back to the hospital and found out she was still alive, but she couldn't see or couldn't hear. And the last thing she told him was to get his diploma and continue being himself, and that she loves him and will be watching over him. I cannot even imagine hearing those words after losing my dad just after also losing my dad, but Quentin was a fighter. His mother would die the next day, and he almost quit football. His high school coach came over in the middle of the night and talked to him, and they ended up getting his passion back, and he channeled all his anger into football. By that point, he had become an absolute beast on the field, and major schools had started to recruit Flowers, except they wanted him at different positions than he wanted to play. Alabama thought he should be a wide receiver, South Carolina wanted him as a defensive back, and Miami wanted him as a running back. He was a big time player and had all the interest in the world as I said, but he wanted to play quarterback and Willie Taggart at USF was the only school that would let him do that, so that's where he went and he committed there. According to 24-7 Sports, he was a borderline 4 star recruit, the number 9 dual threat quarterback, and the 338th best player in the class of 2014. And oh yeah, he ran a 4.440 yard dash in high school as well, and this guy was going to be the best athlete in the American Athletic Conference. Willie Taggart took a ton of heat for this because he was supposed to sign a quarterback in this class, but Flowers was a guy who was labeled as undersized, not a good arm, and a run first quarterback. But Taggart knew this guy's heart and compared him to the likes of Russell Wilson and Johnny Manziel, and he knew that he was smart, tough, and a highly competitive kid that he wanted on his team. When people asked Quentin about his decision to go to USF, he said, quote, When I came here, USF was 2 and 10. People would ask me, why there? Why USF? Why do you want to be there? He just said, I told people I always wanted to be different. I don't want to go to Alabama and be a receiver, or sit behind somebody when I can start my own legacy somewhere else. And that's exactly what he would do. With the Bulls being under second year head coach Willie Taggart, USF was in desperate need of a program turnaround. Nine games into the season, the Bulls needed a change at quarterback, and they would end up plugging in Flowers. Unfortunately, right before that major milestone, his brother was shot and killed. At that point, he had lost it all, Flowers had said. 
as he was walking to his room, he started crying, and he told himself he was going to be that one guy who got to college and make something of himself. He said he was so unbelievably hurt, and that was the third person he had lost in his life. He really only played in one game as a freshman as he completed 6 of 15 passes for 105 yards and a win over SMU, but he had definitely shown some flash. Going into 2015, he was named the starting quarterback, and he started every game. He threw two touchdowns in his first game against Florida A&M, put up a fight versus Florida State, but the Bulls did start out at 1-3. He would get more comfortable in the offense as the season progressed, though, as he had three touchdowns against Syracuse, which would be his first Power 5 win. He would score three more rushing touchdowns against SMU, and besides a loss to Navy, the Bulls were cruising. They defeated number 22 Temple, and USF finished with an 8-4 regular season record before a loss to Western Kentucky in the Miami Beach Bowl back in his hometown. On the year, he threw the ball 2,296 yards and 22 touchdowns, while also rushing for 991 yards and 12 touchdowns on the ground, and those passing touchdowns were a school record. He was a young dynamic star in the making, and he was elevating the USF program. Going into 2016, Taggart and Flowers were both guys on the rise, and they were expected to have breakout years. They almost upset Florida State on national television, but they would start out 6-1. They lose a game to Temple, but would win out and finish at 10-2 before they entered the rankings and beat South Carolina in the Birmingham Bowl. He had over five touchdowns in two separate games, and literally was the definition of a dual threat guy. He was named the American Athletic Conference Player of the Year in 2016, as he rushed for 1,530 yards and 18 touchdowns, while throwing for 2,812 yards and 24 touchdowns with only 7 interceptions. Flowers was also the second best quarterback in terms of QBR according to ESPN in 2016. This guy was talented. He became the first player in Florida college football history to pass for over 2,000 yards and rush for over 1,000 as well. And that includes the legendary Tim Tebow. In 2017, Billy Tiger would leave for Oregon, and Quinton was both high in preseason award watch list and had USF high in the rankings. Former Texas coach Charlie Strong took over, and they were the only group of five schools to start the season ranked as they came in at number 19. They started out 3-0, where Quentin had a five-touchdown performance against Illinois, and he was now a dark horse Heisman contender. The Bulls were 7-0 before a loss to Houston, but they would right in the ship and get to 9-1. They were matched up against Scott Frost's undefeated number 13 UCF Knights in the Battle of I-4, and it was an absolute thriller. This was personally one of my favorite games of all time as I watched as I watched Quentin lead the Bulls back, tie the game with their two minutes to go, and then convert the two-point conversion. But on the ensuing kickoff, UCF's Mike Hughes returned the kick all the way, and they took the lead. On the final possession, they had some things going, but their tight end ended up fumbling the ball away, and they lost the game. In that game, he passed for 503 yards and four touchdowns, and also rushed for 102 yards and a touchdown, and one of the greatest quarterback performances I've ever witnessed. He would get them to the Birmingham Bowl once again, and he would beat Texas Tech for his final collegiate game, and he went 4-3 against Power 5 opponents. He passed for 2,911 yards and 25 touchdowns, with 1,078 yards and 11 touchdowns on the ground as well, and he became the most decorated quarterback in USF history. Despite all that success, he was never expected to be a quarterback in the NFL, so he switched to running back. He signed with the Bengals for the 2018 season, but was only on the practice squad his rookie year. He played well going into the 2019 season, and some people thought he could make the roster, but he was waived right before the season started, and he would need a new place to go. He would spend six days on the Colts practice squad before his NFL time was officially done. He would get a second chance as he was drafted in the XFL, but he left the team for personal reasons. He would come back though, and COVID destroyed the league, and he was once again a free agent. Overall, it looks like he's probably done playing professional football, and I truly wish it could have gone differently for him. The answer to what happened to him is plain and simple. He wasn't good enough to play quarterback or running back in the NFL. He was good at both positions, but never NFL good. He was a great college player, but he was never destined for NFL success, and it's sad based on what he's been through. I think he's one of the best stories in college football, and he's one of the most underrated players of this decade. If you enjoyed today's video or his story, be sure to give the video a like, and I definitely want to know what you guys think. Every time you guys like, comment, share, and just stay till the end, it helps the video get in the algorithm, it can help my channel do better, and I can make more stuff for you guys to put out. So go ahead and do that for me real quick. Be sure to subscribe if you're new, and turn on post notifications if you love college football, and check out all my other What Happened to College Football videos. I will definitely see you guys again soon, but until then, peace.